I'm Madame Dupont of the House of the Mary Swan in the Kingdom of Ontario, and I make silk banners for events, and I'm going to show you how to make one. This is the chapel where I work, and I'd like to invite you in, and I'll show you around. By way of introduction, I was going to take you on a little tour of my chapel, of where I make my silk standards. This is one I made for my household, the Mary Swan. This is for a herald's point. This is the on-tier lion, the populace badge. And I have, I'm a French persona, Madame Dupont, and you have to have fleur de lis. And again here, we have the Mary Swan, a little one I did. And this one is the very first one I did. I took a class in the barony of Audiantum, and Sir All Ale was the instructor. And I did the Ontier Lion, Shire of Timberhaven, and the House of the Mary Swan. I have had this for over three years. And I had to hem the end a little bit. It gets a little tattered on the end after that amount of time. One time it was out in the rain for two weeks. So it stays, stands up pretty good and I still use it on a regular basis. The product I use is from Dharma Trading. D-H-A-R-M-A Trading.com. Recently they recommended that I use their Dynaflow dies. I uh, find I didn't like them as much as the original paint I used that the instructor, my instructor had used, which is the pigment dye in the smaller bottles on the table. That you actually, I think, get more value from those because you can dilute it uh, two to three times, where the larger bottles you don't dilute. And I like the flow better and um, some of the color fast on it. At demos, I have actually used, uh, put my dye in a seashells to help, you know, it look a little better than a plastic container. And in my chapel, I have a wall of inspiration. I have um, a notebook. Uh, a, a lot of banners got by me before I decided to take pictures of them. But in the last three years, I've made over five banners. And these are just a few of my inspirations. Uh, I've had a few that were requests. Most of them I'm just inspired to make. And try to, I've given some away for raffles, some for travel fund um, auctions, and some just to surprise people, and some to people I have no idea who they are. Their, their device just inspired me. While I work on the banners, I like to have medieval music playing. It kind of sets the tone. You almost feel like a monk in the old days back here working on your banner. And I'm not going to go into the history of banners, but the ones I make are referred to as standards. They're long and rectangular shape. They stand out. They would have been used for tournaments and battles. I want to let you know that anybody can make these banners. I have taught a nine-year-old who took a lot less instruction than adults needed, and he did a wonderful job. Um, I am not a crafty person. I've been in the SCA three years, attended many classes, but nothing really appealed to me. And then when I did get involved in the banners, I was nervous getting the supplies. I was scared I would maybe make one and then never make any more. But again, like I said, that was 65 banners ago and a couple years, three years ago. Um, so the material we use is silk from Dharma Trading. It's all hemmed. And I don't sew. I mean, I really am not a crafty person. I don't sew. So my standards are totally rectangular. The proper standard actually has a bump on the end, or two bumps, or um, you could have swallow tails, which um, will be in some of my instructions that will be available to you. 
So um, the banner is actually, I'm five foot 11. The banner is actually uh, five feet, 60 inches. When you get the silk from Dharma Trading, you need to wash it in like a wool light or a very light um, uh, soap because there will be residue from the factory and it does shrink. It shrinks about an inch. So you want to wash it before and then, then uh, rinse it off and let it dry, which doesn't take very long. Now, after you got your silk, you get a frame. This frame is about four inches all the way around wider than your silk. And this is a little half inch uh, piping. You can get it at any plumbing store. So you get the four pieces and four corners and I ended up gluing my frame corners. I always thought I'd keep them unglued because, oh, it's easy to transport, but it's also easy to come off. I've had them tied to the frame and the corners slip off and then they all kind of <laughs> fall, fall right off. So uh, gluing the corners is a good idea. I will have the sizes and instructions and a material list link at the bottom of this video for you. And the first step now, when you have your silk and your frame, is to whip stitch it on. You just get some white thread and a needle, and you thread the needle just single. You know, you don't need to double it up. Just tie a knot at the end of the needle, and then pull out enough thread you're comfortable with. Um, whatever that is, uh, it can get tangled up you'll find out if you pulled out too much and then we're going to start whip stitching this onto the frame now when you have the needle tied uh, one one thing i've learned is um like this length here i do four four lengths of string one two three four so the amount of distance you want to do is kind of four lengths of string in that distance. 